The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Who saved Rabbi, this man or his parents? Why was he born blind? He wasn't born blind because he or his parents sinned, but so that God's works might be displayed in him. We have to do the work of him who sent me while in his day. When night comes, no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made a paste from it, and applied it to the man's eyes. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. The man went away and washed. When he returned, he was able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him begging before asked, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, yes, he's the one. But others said, no, he only looks like him. How were your eyes open? A man named Jesus. I made a face and smeared it on my eyes and told me to go to sidewalk and wash. And when I went there and washed, I could see. Where is he? They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. Since it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the paste and opened his eyes, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He put a paste on my eyes that I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man can't be from God, for he doesn't observe the Sabbath. Others asked, But how could a sinful man do such signs. They were divided, and so they again asked the blind man. What do you have to say about him, since it was your eyes he opened? He is a prophet. The Jews would not believe that he had been blind and then received his sight, until they had called his parents. They asked them. Is this man your son, who you say was born blind? How is it that he can see? We know he's our son and that he was born blind. We don't know how he's able to see now or who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who acknowledged Jesus to be the Christ would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said, Tell the truth before God. We know this man is a sinner. I don't know if he's a sinner. All I know is that once I was blind, and now I see. What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? <coughs> I already told you, but you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear again? Do you want to become disciples of this? You're his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. Isn't this great? Here's a man who has opened my eyes, and you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but only to every someone who is devout and does his will. Ever since the world began, it is unheard of for anyone to open the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not God, he couldn't do anything. Who are you to teach us? You were born and bred in sin. And they expelled him from the synagogue. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. When he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Tell me who he is, sir, that I may believe in him. You are looking at him. He's the one speaking to you. Lord, I believe. It is the judgment that I came into this world, so that those without sight might see those with sight 
may become blind. Are you saying that we are blind? If you were blind, you would not be guilty. But since you say, we see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. I have a blind spot. It's on my right side. The reason I have, been, I have a blind spot is that when I was younger, I was cross-eyed. And at the age of three, I had surgery to straighten my eye, and I had to wear a patch on my good eye. But all of that didn't help to regain all the sight in that eye. It doesn't matter too much. It doesn't bother me too much or get in my way. But every once in a while, I can't quite see everything. And when I do notice it is when I'm talking to someone in front of me and there's someone to the right of me trying to get my attention and I don't see them. It's not that I'm ignoring them. It's just that I actually don't see them. Which makes me think of other blind spots, not literal blind spots by vision, but blind spots that we have because of the way we live our lives. Sometimes I wonder if I create my own blind spots in my life when I am too busy, too busy that I am distracted with my own schedule or agenda that I get, that I can't quite see how Christ is calling me on specific days when I am on my busy schedule. There are many things, or many ways that we can create blind spots in our lives. We can create blind spots when we are skeptical or judgmental or worry about being accepted. Blind spots distract us from serving our neighbors. Blind spots blur our confidence and understanding of who God has called us to be. I came across a great commercial produced by State Farm recently that has gotten a lot of media attention. Be assured, I am not trying to sell insurance. <laughs> However, the commercial does a creative job of illustrating God calling us and trying to get our attention and being persistent in our lives. There are some of the words in the video that you might not be able to see as it's going on, so I'd like to tell them to you. On the bus, there's a sign that says, Adopt a Pet, Save a Pet. On the computer that the man is reading, it says, Support Our Veterans. On the television in the restaurant, it says, Dropout Rate Rising. And on the street sign, it says, as a man is holding it, it says, anything helps. I need you, I need you, I need you right now Yeah, I need you 
You can lift the weight of caring by doing. Visit State Farm's NeighborhoodOfGood.com to volunteer in your community. Don't let me down. As followers of Christ, we are called to see what is right in front of us. The hungry, the homeless, the bullied, the lonely, and the oppressed. In Christ, we are no longer to ignore those in need. Many of us want concrete proof to help us believe and act in Christ. However, when Jesus in today's reading does give the community a sign by healing the man, giving him sight, the community seems to have a blind spot and looks for reasons not to believe in Jesus' work. The neighbors of the community have a blind spot in their skepticism. They have a blind spot preventing them from seeing that the man that they knew, seeing him as the same man that's been healed. The Pharisees have a blind spot of being judgmental. They're so caught in the rules and regulations that they see Christ as a sinner because he healed on the Sabbath. They had a blind spot to seeing the amazing and astonishing way in which God had worked, in which Jesus had worked to heal this man. Then, there the, then there's the man's own parents. They have a blind spot of worrying about being accepted. They're in fear that they will be kicked out of the synagogue if they acknowledge that their son was healed by Jesus. The neighbors, the Pharisees, and the parents all have blind spots in one way or another that distracts them from seeing Jesus and the work that he is doing to bring God's light. The truth is, we all have blind spots. We are not the best at seeing everything. Fortunately, as followers of Christ, we don't have to trust our own eyes. We just are called to trust that Christ will reveal to us the work of God. We are called to trust that Christ is kind of like a car's blind spot detector for us. None of us see everything that God is doing. I'm appreciative of the times that God helps us to see. The times when Christ confronts us, and also the times when Christ comforts us with showing us love and joy in the world, but also the times when Christ again confronts us and challenges us to move forward and to walk on and do the work Christ has set out for us. God is at work in our congregation in many and varied ways. In January, Pam Shearman came to talk about ICDI, which is the um, Interfaith Community for Detained Immigrants. And we had a group from our congregation go and get trained so that they could visit detained immigrants in jail. We also have people coming back from Panama who are doing ministry and helping people with their teeth in Project Save a Smile. In addition, midweek, we have 42 confirmation students and adults come together to talk about scripture and to journey together in Lent and walk on in their faith. God brings light into our world, even with our blind spots. Christ helps us to see, and Christ brings love and joy into our world. May we daily use these words in our prayer, words that say, Lord, help us to see. And as we walk on this week, help us to have the peace that Christ leaves with us. So walk on, Bethany Lutheran Church. Walk on. Peace I leave with you.